It's green room. It's green room now. You're green room right now. Well, we are in the green room. This is uh, the B sides. The B sides. In the green room. This is us warming up, uh, checking our equipment, doing calisthenics, making sure you don't have equipment issues again. It's always me. With the equipment equipment issues, pretty much, yeah. You know, man, are we just going to start? Right, okay. I'm going to have to have my own hotline after a while. I, I thought that was already a step. Like, that's not a thing. <laughs> is this is this not how this works? What are you doing over there? Te- uh, technical stuff? Everything yeah. all right? Yeah, just uh, making sure the equipment is doing its thing. And that's what this is, man. This is warm up and we make stuff work right. Is it working right? It is now. All right. Yeah, we did a sound check. Uh, we ran through that and everything's good. Now we can just be, you know, boring because that's what we do here. We are boring. Yeah. Yeah. So boring. That's what it sounds like so far. Yeah. Oh, There's like no. Uh, I wanna, oh, you want. I want to. Oh, you're not going to wait. All right. I beat you to it. I win. See, there you go. You know, the equipment issues. Bumping into shit. It was for a fact. It was for a fact. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah, Mr. Gemini's being mm. difficult again. What? No, we're not going to start off like that. The, no, but I just I had a you I had were a not. Quote, I had a quote in mind that. Yeah, go ahead. What's up? It's green room, bro. Let's do this. It was a Krishna Murti quote. Hari Krishna. <laughs> Is well, that's not a thing. And you might rec- you might recognize this one. In oneself lies the whole world. And if you know how to look and learn, the door is there and the key is in your hand. Nobody on earth can give you either the key or the door to open except yourself. What is that from again? Uh, Krishnamurti. What, what, what does that mean? That, that's the person's name? Yeah, it was like a spiritual, yeah. Buddhist or something like that. Some form of a form of a Taoist, I guess. Something like that, yeah. You know, maybe a wise man. Okay, but you don't know if it's like Buddhism or a Taoism or Hinduism or. Well, they all. Well, I know they're all very similar, but I'm just. I'm, well, I'm they all, in a way, stem origin. stem from Hinduism, from their origins. Is that a thing? Yeah, it's true. Okay. I mean, I don't really have specific knowledge on that, so I can't. They're all like, as, as they branched out, you know, became different things in different countries, so to speak. Yeah. Like but, a, but there's a lot of similarities. Like yeah. a dialect. So as things, you know, transfer from place to place, they modify to be specific to, right. you know, that, that geographical location and the culture of that spot then at that point. Okay, I get that. Oh, I'm sorry, people. I'm gross right now. Like the Tao Te Ching was right. Is that how you say it? The what? The Tao Te Ching. I don't even know what you're saying um, right it's now. It's the number system that they used, like the, all the different. Oh right, right. The patterns that you could make within a series of nine or something like. That. I forget. The yeah, I, yeah, I don't. Um, I know what you're talking about, but yeah, I don't have. But that. it was like kind of like the mathematics behind reality, sort of. The way they looked at it, but yeah, all all similar in a way. All originally coming from Hinduism, basically, because it's one of the oldest. See, this is what I'm talking about from like the last time. You in the green room are all like serious, and you're like bringing all sorts of information. You're like educating. You're being in, you know engaging. But now that we're on the transmission. Well, that's a much lighter train. And is, that is no 9.6 there, my friend. No, that's true. Yeah, it's a, what, 5.1 or thing? That'll yeah. be enough. It's like, <laughs> that'll do. Cheap date. Harsh, man. Why? Always harsh. That, that's an insult, being a cheap date? <laughs> well, no, actually, it's not. Especially either. when I'm buying. How's that, how's, that about a, how's that a bad thing for me? I don't, I don't see an issue with that. 
I, I rather like that. I mean, heck, dude, last time we went out to, to dinner, I didn't even have to buy you nothing. I just gave you all my sides. That's true. That's a true story. I like vegetables. Nothing wrong with that. Everything right with that. Yeah. And I was on a all protein carnivore for a hot minute. I think it was like in like the third week of it or something, but yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you really are a cheap date. Thank you. Yeah. It's a compliment. I mean, I don't, why well, you gotta, I don't know how to take compliments. <laughs> well, you take them and then you put them in your bag and you put it over your shoulder. And you just take them with you. That's how you take a compliment. Do, do you visualize it that way? I totally do. Yeah. I put the strap over my shoulder and everything. That's, do you, do you was, like pull them out every once in a while and give them a hug and put them back in? If I pull them out, I usually give them to somebody else. Oh no. Okay. That works. Yeah. I'm very caring like that. I mean, at least I like to think I'm very caring like that. So you keep that around you like a sack of change. I carry all my positivity with me always. Yeah. Like a sack of goodwill that you could hand out freely. Yeah, I mean, if I had a big fat belly and a beard, I could be Santa. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how cheerful I am and the, the amount of good and joy I bring. What's up? Been working on it. Cheers to that, man. Oh, thank you. Oh, I cheers the mic. <laughs> yeah. Equipment issues. No, I literally cheers the mic. I yeah, no, 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 no. It's, it's all good. So you're just trying yeah. to feel not so alone? It happens. It. You know, it happens. <laughs> Uh, sometimes when you're cracking a beer, you hit the mic, you know, no, I, think, I think after you've cracked several beers, you always wind up getting on the mic. Cause then it's like karaoke or something. I'll sing that shit. No, you ain't sit down. <laughs> sit down. You don't even know the words. Sit down. I'll read it for the screen. You can't read. Just sit down. <laughs> oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And you're all going to do it with me. That's the first time I went up for karaoke. I made everybody up, go up with me and I picked like the longest song that was in the book. Did you really? Yeah. Did you like, you seriously did that? Yeah. It was like, totally. It was a uh, meatloaf. Oh God. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I totally what, did. What, what, uh, what is the title on that? Um, um, what? It, you, you can know, do love anything you to the for end love. of time. Yeah, I swear. Yeah. You could do uh, anything for love or something like that. Yeah. But that's not the it's title. Classic, though. classic song. I can't even think of the title, but yeah. yeah. It goes on and on forever. Yeah. Let, let me, me sleep, sleep on, on it. it. <laughs> baby, baby, let me sleep on it. Yeah. But I was like, no, y'all coming with me if I'm getting on the mic. See, and you know what? I tell you what, the um, having known, like, seen, like, Meatloaf as a performer, when he was, uh, he was in Tenacious D, the Pick of Destiny, and he was Jack Black's father. He, he played it so well. That's so strangely appropriate. Yeah, but I mean, because he had to be musical because it was a musical, you know? I mean, that's that's the, the way the movie was done. It was an actual musical. There was yeah. performance pieces. And having having him as that, that kind of a character, like, yeah, he sells it pretty well. So it was, like, beyond fitting. Plus, I mean, I think the, the size of him in comparison to what Jack Black turned out to be as, you know, an adult from that child. So I think the, the sizing was appropriate. Like, it was just it was a well-placed character. Like, the casting was great on that. Did you just hit your mic again? I saw that. No, I hit the cable. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. I equipment know. issues. I'm trying to, like... You got issues with your equipment. Uh, I got issues that need tissues. Yeah, that's for sure. Maybe I should just not gesture as much. Well, then you, you wouldn't be able to speak anymore. I would be a robot. <laughs> I am like, a what, robot. What do, I, what do I do with my hands right now? I don't know. What like, am I, I don't know. To do I don't know. Just put them down by your side. Dude, you know, <laughs> I tell you what, we were, I was re-listening to uh, our last episode, and there was just like some like little side jokes and stuff in there that just like completely cracked me up. I totally thought of it, and then I completely forgot which one I was going to tell you it was. Because oh, it just like. Oh, well. Totally forgot. Yeah. No, we're in the green room. It happens. So anyway, I don't know. It'll come back around again. So, it usually does. So how'd you feel about the quote overall? Oh, that's decent. what it was. That was the quote. The, I remember when we were talking about, uh, when I said, well, but, and you're like, did you just say, well, but I was like, well, but, yeah, and then you, then you went, um, was it like, I like big butts. And then I was like, yeah, we just totally quoted a movie and a song. And then all of a sudden you're like, Hey boss, big butts. <laughs> it was upon listening to it. After doing so, all of a sudden, I was just like, "Oh, yeah!" It was was that Shark Tale or whatever? Or, yeah, yeah. The the Will Smith Shark Fish movie, the animated <laughs> with uh, Renee Zellweger. And, hey, boss! Big butts. Yeah, because he was playing it it's on like the wrong side. Yeah, 
or why those two things. I don't know, but. Well, yeah, because uh, the thing that triggers in my head is in um, the book of Eli. There's a scene where there's an older couple that basically live out in the middle of nowhere and they more or less are like eating people as they come through because it's the apocalypse, right? It's book yeah. of Eli. And they have post apocalyptic. Yeah. So they have Denzel Washington and, um, Oh, uh, Mila Kunis, the, the two main characters of the movie, they come into their house and they're going to entertain them. Right. So they're like drinking tea and they're making them sandwiches and all this stuff. She puts on an actual phonograph cause it's got the, the bell and you know, the, the big arm, the needle and everything. So it's not a record player. It's a phonograph. She puts on a record and starts playing it and it like dips in and it's freaking disco. And it's like, ring my bell, <laughs> ring my bell. And it's just like, here they are in the middle of the apocalypse and, and she's playing freaking, you know, disco, like some Donna Summer shit. And it's just like, you know, what the F? Dude, like stuff like that is just so fitting. And then you know, I, I really enjoy those like little, little touches. Yeah. That's some of the cool stuff about like what, uh, 28 days or 28 days later or whatever. We like got 20 days was the first. Yeah. yeah. Later was the, you know, the second one. More of the same. It's scary though. Yeah. I'll be honest. I don't, I don't think I really actually watched either of those in their entirety beginning to end in a single sitting. No. Yeah. I've caught, uh, I would say I've seen enough of it in bits and pieces where I've probably seen them, but yeah, never as a, as an, uh, an entire sitting. Yeah. It's, I've done that a few times on some movies. It's a, it's a real trip. It's like, I don't know. I don't know how to put that, but it's a wild ride. Yeah. Well, the overall premise in the show or, or yeah. the movie, I mean, yeah, the movie anyway. Well, but I mean, to, well, but well, but, and I think uh, with, with pretty much any of the like zombie virus takeover apocalyptic style movies, you get that kind of same sense because it's uh, it's almost like it's believable. There's there's a probability that you're like, I mean, it may not happen, but it could. Well, it's it's always introduced in a way that's yeah, it makes it very believable. Yeah, highly not even yeah, highly probable. Right. Yeah, I mean, because uh, the, the the current situation and stuff, if you think about it, was um, I am Legend, pretty much the same thing, but it was cancer. But, you know, they're rushing a vaccine inoculation, you know, whatever, and they're just like, oh, this is the latest, greatest, newest, bestest. And all of a sudden, you know, 10 years later, you get the actual effect of it. And it's like, you know, the, the whole world falls apart. Yeah. And somehow there's like scattered remains of people here and there, but that's it. Because right. yeah, there's always going to be that, you know, science has always said there's going to be your your anomalies and then your extreme outliers, you know, your uh what do you, what are the, the Z point, like the, you know, three, three, um, deviations from the original, you, you're going to have that kind of stuff. So no matter what, yeah, you're going to, and it, what, that's Darwinism, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Was, you, you never, it doesn't have to mean that you're the smartest or the fastest. It could just be that you have the appropriate genetics. It seems, it seems to me that, that zombies, you know, among the four other things maybe that I could take off on my hand of things that are that are common now for movie themes or show themes, you know, but why zombie in particular? And I wonder if there's like a deeper meaning to that for whoever the writer is of these different shows and movies. If there's a kind of an underlying like social experiment, sort of say, well, to, see, to put out there this concept that and I've when always, people don't share the same beliefs as you, that, that they're like zombies or, well, and I've, I've, I've constantly, at least in a, a scholastic mindset, had the idea of zombie be put on me as more of just your average consumer. So blinded by whatever that they have going on that they just, you know, what, what's the I want brains like it's always hungry for brains. But in actuality, it's not brains because, you know, it's an analogy. It's, you know, they, they want to consume, though. So it's they just want to constantly ingest which for, for, you know, capitalism or consumerism or whatever you want to call it. It's so to me, zombie is very well, much I mean, that mindless consumer. I guess. Yeah, I guess in a way, but that's what I'm from a scholastic, not mindset, that it's like an anti-capitalist thing. I never saw it that way, but just that the nature of humanity to be just a, a consuming creature. I mean, you know, but your quote 
from before was something to do that, you know, our importance is no greater or less than any other animal on this planet. Oh you yeah. Know, the the that, David Attenborough thing. Yeah. Basically that, that we should, and we should view them in a way as equals. Oh, absolutely. You know? I mean, I think that's to the, the greater point of it. I agree to that. No. Yeah. Anyhow. I don't see. That's what I'm saying, dude. We're in the green room. We should be like, we're supposed to be like wilding out. <laughs> like we need to be getting strippers up in here and like throwing dollar bills, making it rain. I mean, all right, I'll throw some quarters. I'll make it sprinkle. Yo, homie. <laughs> what? What? What's going on here? Well, no, I just, it's the green room. You know, we don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah we, what happens in the green room? Right. Well, technically we're in our golden palace where, you know, we just can have whatever we want. So we could just tell everybody who's listening. The solid gold studio or? Yeah, that we have like, you know, open bar and that we're all like all drinking Patron or something. I don't know. You know we can just make this shit. They don't know. Dude, who knows? We're on a G6 traveling across, you know. We are totally on a G6 right now. You know, and we are, we are, what the, what, what the, oh, damn, I just had it in my head <laughs> feeling so fly like a G6 or something like that, right? What was that? What was that song? I think that was what it was. I don't know. I guess that's what I'm going for right now, then. Yeah. Who knows? We could be on a G6 right now making this recording. We could be in a Volkswagen bus outside. All I know is we are high on a top of a Mount Olympus. Mm hmm. At the top of Mount Olympus, yeah. Acme, Apex, Apex. Who? Yeah, the the highest, Dude. the highest point. The, the oh, Texas Mundi. Is that what you're thinking of? Like the well, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you just said right there. Don't worry about it. That was like Joe Dirt, wasn't it? <laughs> just don't even worry about it. You, yeah, yeah. You, don't try to don't try to spruce it up. No, no, no. You church it up in here, boy. You don't try to church it up in here, boy. <laughs> He's like, that's deer tay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> don't try to spruce it up, there, Joe Dirt. Yeah, no. He said, yeah. He literally says, don't try to church it up. Huh. Yeah, no. That's the yeah, man. You can you can. T- I need to go back and watch that again. Fact apparently. check me on that, bro. All right. Yeah, that's also the one where he's like. Oh, what is he like? He's like, I'd eat an apple out of what is something Tillman's ass or whatever. But he's like, is that queer? It's just like, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, you see, I read your bumper sticker. It said cowboys butts drop me nuts. <laughs> yeah, there's so many good quotes in there too. You, what, you ain't got no like whistling bung holes and the hoosker do's and hoosker don'ts. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't remember all the quotes, but that, that movie was all over the place. Oh yeah, man! I got the poo on me, and he's like dancing. We were talking about that before with uh, certain actors that you know. What kind of scripts do they actually write for them, or do they just kind of say, you know, I need to get this across, but other than that, just help yourself. I mean, because there's certain actors that just they get on, they get on stage and they just kind of do their own thing. And and I I think there's been quite a few, at least for the stuff that I know I watch. There's been you know, a decent mix of directors that are just like, yeah, the script is what it is. We know this is who the people we want. You know, they're casting it right. They're like, they had everybody in mind. Like this is just, they wrote it in this fashion. And there's other versions where they allow that actor to come in and you're like, you know what? Hey, I really like what I did. Give me something that you got. And so they'll run their own sets, you know, for the director's uh, cuts and then go to the other person and be like, hey, ad lib, you know, you, you guys run it how you want or, you know, you do whatever you need to do and they'll make take changes all to cuts. make it feel more natural, basically. Well, because if you're playing that character, especially if you're being, you know, that method actor, if you're really putting yourself in that place, then you should have that greater mindset where. Like the, to the, tap into the, your muse, like well, your creative spirit. Right, yeah. because whoever the writer, director, producer, like as you're putting all this stuff together, you're basically making assumptions. And when you get that individual who's truly being that character, it, it shouldn't be an assumption. It should actually be an action. So if you're allowing them to just get out of their own way, it should make a, a better production. Right. As right. well as when you're just like, you know, you just totally let shit go. It's just like, dude, the stuff that comes out your mouth, it's like, oh, d- did I just say that? Oh, damn. But to certain people, it doesn't matter. Like, you, you could read a grocery list or something ridiculous, and it doesn't matter, you know? See, I think with Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman <laughs> was, was one Morgan of them. Freeman. Yeah. 
Morgan Freeman can read anything. You're just like, I don't know what it is, but I want some of that. Yeah. Fucking Morgan Freeman, dude. Well, that guy's the cadence of his voice. It's just, well, I think there's a lot to be said for cadence, uh, temperament tone. I mean, all that stuff plays into, yeah, I'm I'm hungry. (laughs) Wow. Okay. (laughs) What's that? Green room. I've been drinking. Is there an animal in here somewhere? A barking tree spider. <laughs> Watch out for those guys. But yeah, no, Cadence, temperament, all that stuff. It, like we were talking about before, the awkward pauses. When you as a confident orator, you know, speaker, when you can actually not only accept those pauses, but come to find the enjoyment in it, because you're like, oh, we're about to do this. Oh, it's like that last click on the roller coaster before you know you're just going to like, bah! And just it's just like loopy loops and the corkscrews and then the ride starts. Well, I mean, like to some extent, if you were if you're listening up to that point where you hear that that pregnant pause, you know, you get more the feeling that the person that's speaking is really thinking through and and everything is everything is set up before they even open their mouth to finish that statement. So it's you know it's coming from the heart. You know, and it does lend a lot more credibility. Right. Well, if you're able to, instead of just running through the line, running through the line. Yeah. That know? was that thing I talked about. Instead of saying, um, or awe as your brain's searching, it's like, dude, you're already pausing. Just, just pause. You don't have to. And I think Joe, I, I remember seeing a clip with Joe Rogan where he was talking about where it's, it's basically this thing where we, we use the ums and the awes so we can audibly note to those who are listening, like, I'm still speaking as opposed to being comfortable or confident and having that, you know, like you said, pregnant pause where it's just an excessive moment where they're thinking. And it's like, dude, I'm so deep in thought that what I'm about to say is to a point that you, you need to wait that half second, a second, whatever, as there's just this dead air and allow me to finish my expression because it's, it's dope. So yeah, yeah there's, it, there's, it, it kind of puts, like accent marks on what you're about to say, basically. That whoa, hey, was I too far away? All right, pushing the mic closer to me. I put it in his mouth. Does this whenever it's told, dude? I was gonna <laughs> say that. What seems like this is what gets me. So, like, not only do like it's not, the voice, you just did the voice. Well, but because I mean, yeah, you said that yourself before. There was, you know, the appropriate. You can't say anything in that voice and have it be taken serious. Well, but it's the appropriate inflection. All of a sudden, it's like that inflection makes us think of. So that's why I was like that previous conversation where I'm like, yo, not only do you and I watch the same stuff separately and pick the same quotes out. Put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> Put the fucking lotion in the basket, bitch. <laughs> uh, but not only do we pick out those things, but. We also wind up being in, you know, uh, like sync with it too. Cause, you know, you, I said, and you started, and and you, I was you thinking, said, I said, <laughs> and you said, and I was thinking what you said, and I said what you said, cause I was thinking it. And you and me yeah. saved all these people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's uh, when the, I, I would be curious. I'm, I would be, I am curious. Like, what is that? You know, and that's why I, I think I said it's probably at some point, you know, psychology would dictate, dictate that it's an extension of our internal expressions. So there's got to be like a commonality basically between us as to why we would choose that, which kind of explains why we're in this abusive relationship together. <laughs> we can't quit each well, other. Like, you have this fixation with older movies. You've, you've said it before where like you don't really branch out and, and try to see new things like every once in a while, maybe well, but. Not recently. And a lot of that's because most of what's out there is basically like a reboot or, you know, mm. straight up theft. I've been saying that for a while. Yeah. Not so that there just, hasn't been good things coming from it. I mean, well, yeah, and there are some, some interesting movies, but I mean, nothing like groundbreaking. Well, yeah. There's been plenty of good stuff lately. Like the matrix. Just, well, but that's that thing is, yeah, well, but now you're making me so subconscious. Well, but <laughs> so you get subconscious instead of like, <laughs> come on, that's hilarious. And, and I think that's that thing though, is because they don't, they don't, you know, what was, I, I said it, I said it when we had to do the cliff notes where you take all the crap out of the movie and just leave the quotes. Yeah. It's like, dude, I need to be engaged. Like I gotta, I gotta, I want to buy in. So 
I need, I need a better story. I need plot. I need cast. I need, you know, I need all that kind of stuff. So when I've seen the same thing, it's just from like somebody else. It's like, yeah, you you better bring it. There better be some homage. It's the dialogue. It's the interplay between the actors and the characters that they're playing. Like, you know, that whole doll doll. (laughs) doll. You're right there. Sorry, dude. I'm telling you, all the rain lately. I think I just, you know, I'm sensitive. My my nose. I got this. You you live out by the river. There's a lot of things growing out there. You know. I live out by the river. All the pollen on the river. Well, not like on it, on it, but I'm not Huck Finn. (laughs) (laughs) Like in a paddle boat. (laughs) That I do. I mean, honestly, I'd be all right with that. (laughs) Dude, those things are dope. I make a banging ass house out of that. I'd be happy as can be. Hmm. All right, but no, what were we just talking about? We were talking about quotes and stuff, right? Yeah. We were always talking about quotes. But yeah, no, so that's, I, I'm curious as to what, what that, cause yeah, dude, the, the right inflection, you know, you, you could say two words in a row that has nothing to do with what that quote is that one of us says. However, it's like those two words in a row is a part of that quote and our brain just goes, and it just like fills in the blank, like a Mad Libs or something. Yeah. And especially if you're doing a voice with it or something well, that carries it, like two words would be more than enough in some cases. What's the point of doing it? If you're not going to do the voices, Ray, <laughs> what did you do? Ray? <laughs> Couldn't it's help most, it. It was the most innocent thing I could think. <laughs> I try to think of the most wholesome thing. In my <laughs> Ray, what? Oh, it's the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. <laughs> it's all right. He's a sailor. We get him laid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that's a uh, nobody steps on a church in my town and gets away with it. <clears throat> yeah, we'd have to like test your theory on use that use that movie and test your theory as to like would that be over twenty minute movie. Well, so, so technically we would be testing the hypothesis. Right. Okay. And then once we can get it to a <laughs> provable rate where it's like, okay, this is predictable, then we can call it a theory. At that point, we now like market it as reminding me of the, the way it progresses. Thank you. Yeah. Empirical thinking. That's right. That's yeah. exactly what that is. That's how you get empirical knowledge. Right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Science. 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 <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Sorry, I slurped. I uh, heard that about you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sick bastard. <sighs> oh, who's I talking? Apologize. Oh, up. there we go. But yeah, no, it was, um... What? Yeah, it I, was, um... But, um... But, um, bum... But um, but um, but um, but um. <laughs> yeah, but I, I really do think that this is the thing, though. Like, I think we really have started to create a whole new rating system for movies. Can we do that? Like, yeah, dude, we, we just all we have to do is turn into an app because then we'd be like, oh, there's an app for that. And as soon as you say that, you well, know, but who's, it's good. who's the judge for what's a quote, though? A good quotable quote. Um, us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we're creating it, we're God at this point. Like, what's up? Right, but I'm saying, where does that, where do you draw the line on that? I'm like, to me, I would, it would just pop to my head is like Super why Troopers. Your kitchen is blue. Oh, yeah, no, but like, dude, yeah, Super Troopers, where he's like nine and a half, he's like, mm, and he's like shaking the other one. He's like, yeah, no, dude, if we're in that place where it's like, uh, I feel like, then no, it doesn't go. But when you're just like, yes, or somebody else quotes it with you, dude, instant, instant, yeah, you know, that's yes. Oh, that's weird, wacky stuff. I did not know that. Did you know that? Yes. <laughs> Ed, did you know that? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's weird, wild stuff. That's just. <clears throat> <clears throat> yes. Yeah. I do a horrible Ed. Yeah. Me as well. We should probably stop doing that. It's green room. We can do whatever we want. Everybody jump on the bed. There's a bed. Oh. It's over there. That would be funny. Technically, yeah. <laughs> so you just punch it. Currently, once you cross the imagination threshold, it is a sound barrier. It's solid gold, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I don't think solid gold makes for a great sound barrier. I feel like it's like a reverberator. <laughs> what is the resonant factor of gold? Especially if it was like the entire wall? I'm curious. Hmm. That metal could make for a really noisy room, probably. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. There'd be some wicked echo with like mad reverb. 
There'd be like reverb with delay. That'd be a lot of echo. If it was a couple pieces well placed of gold, maybe. I think the whole wall being made out of gold would probably be too much. Oh, now you're retracting your previous statement. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see how it is. What okay. do you see? You don't see nothing. That's because I'm blind. <laughs> Why do you keep making fun of me? Can't make fun of a disability. <laughs> you don't laugh at me, man. It's not funny. I'm, I'm not laughing with I'm laughing for you. It's only yeah. fair. Don't laugh for me either. Why not? You need to laugh right now. I already did. We'll laugh again for yourself. Isn't that good for you? Like, doesn't it like to laugh, your... laugh at yourself? I think self deprecating, self deprecating mm -hmm. humor is probably a not self defecating. Cause that would be bad. Well, I mean, <laughs> I hope I don't need assistance in that department. <laughs> so I should hope that I can defecate by myself. <laughs> I'm just, you know, just in case you were to confuse the two words, but you know, well, but I mean, that would be, yeah, well, but not well, but, close to the same thing. Well, but a well, but I think to me, uh, deprecating and defecating on yourself is kind of the same thing because you're talking shit. So that's like a slang <laughs> version, <laughs> right? Well, you'd I'm be talking saying. trash, talking shit, whatever. No, I don't talk trash, bro. I go right for the pooper. I get, <laughs> yeah, dude, dirty and nasty. I stick it in there real slow, like. Oh, oh, now you're going to do that. Wu-Tang. Yeah. You know, I put a hang on a stove, and let, that, let that shit just sit there for like a half hour. Yeah. Just stick it in your ass slow, like. Tss. Yeah, I'm going to put your nuts. I'm gonna <laughs> put them up on a fucking dress, just your nuts on a fucking dresser, and then we'll take a Louisville slug. And no, no, no. Bang them shits just with a spiked spike. bat. Yeah. <laughs> Bang them shits with a spiked fucking bat. Yeah, I'm going to sew your asshole closed. And keep feeding you and feeding you and feeding you. Yeah. The M E T H O D. M E T H O D. Oh, no, now we're getting in copyright territory. You yeah. gotta be careful. No, we're not. <laughs> ain't no copyright here. We ain't trying to make money off this. See, here's the thing, dude. Copyright infringement, they have in the wordage all about making profit. When you do it for money, we ain't doing this for money. This, this, costs, this costs us money. The electricity, the equipment, ain't nobody paying us for this. Dude, we don't even get high fives, man. This is fucked yeah, up. Yeah, the snacks, the beer, it all costs money. Yeah, and I pay all that shit for you. You owe me. I appreciate you. Get out on that street. I <laughs> Put your pretty dress on, make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it button hooked me. I, didn't. I button hooked you. You know, it's, you know, that'll happen. We're in the green room. We're allowed to do that. Cheers. Yeah, that's where we're supposed to get the funnies out. Right meow. Right meow. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Nine and a half. <laughs> Dude, when you do shit like this. I know. It's just, I was, you, you, it doesn't, yeah. When you hold up nine and a half fingers and wave them. You did it. You're doing it now. Yeah. I. But I'm also saying when you, <laughs> when you put up nine and a half fingers and wave them like jazz hands, just like they do in Super Troopers, you have to express that. They can't see this. You're absolutely right. Yeah. You have to paint the word picture. I mean, you don't have to paint it well, but you do have to paint it. Well, I brought it up and you painted it. I mean, I heard that about you. What? And I am an artist. I don't know what you're talking about. But if you have to think about it, it's not meant for you. <laughs> hey, some of us are meant to understand things and some of us aren't. I'm just saying, this is your world. You need to live it's in it. It's not what I implied. It's what you inferred. <laughs> what is that from? <laughs> Dude, I've heard that. Oh, man. It's so true. Two different things. I feel like that was a Ferris quote. Just from the tone, from the inflection. If it was, I'd be surprised. I don't know. But it was just the truth. The two truths. <laughs> See, now we're quoting ourselves. The, the, tru I the truths. I love truths. that we quote ourselves. I think that shit is hilarious. The like, two utes, the two, um, excuse me, the two what? No, the two utes. The two, sorry, the two youths. No, 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 no. You, he says utes. The two utes. The, the, I'm sorry, the two what? <laughs> Yeah, Fred Willard, the uh, Herman Munster, Herman the Munster, judge. Yep. He's I'm the two what? He, 
the two the two youths. He's like the the the, the what? Uh, sorry, Your Honor. The two youths. <laughs> yeah, he over enunciates the th. <laughs> yeah, he elongates the shit out of that. What? I, I see. That's another great movie where they Person picked passion. an amazing cast. Well, because I mean, do um, uh, R- Marissa Tomei right? As his yeah. fiance or whatever. It's a trick question. Yeah. yeah. They didn't make the posi traction in the 1967 Tempest. However, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no awesome. I think that that seems great, especially as like a motorhead. So knowing certain things about uh, a lot of Chevy engines and stuff, the GM power plants and whatnot. Oh, so you can't answer the question? No, it's a trick question. No one can answer it. Yeah, because they didn't make that. However, if you were the preferred, oh, it's it's like 10 degrees before top dead center. And she's just like, any more questions? No more questions, Your Honor. (laughs) Like walks away all smug and pissed off. He's like, well, she's right. Yeah. She qualified. Well, but that's the thing is going through that. See, I see. I'm so like, I keep saying well, but man. Well, but. No, I get you all. What's better than saying right? I always say right. Right. I know, but no, I mean, just put whatever you want in there. That's what she said. What? <laughs> but um, bump. <laughs> anyway, so the the scenario that she puts out there, because typically in movies, the information that they do is like such BS, where you're just like that. That's not a thing. Like you, no, no, that's so wrong. It's like, bro, it's a movie. Don't read into it. You can actually read into it on that one because it's pretty much. I mean, that's fairly accurate. And the way she sells it is just pretty dope, too. Yeah. Well, because, you know, she's a chick and she's just banging it out. But she's also like, you know, heavy New Yorker. So it's got like mad attitude on top of it. Plus, she's Italian. You're just like, oh, Jesus. You just pissed her off. It's, it's your grave, bro. Keep digging. So are you telling me that water soaks into a grit <laughs> at a different speed in your kitchen? What do you, you use? Instant no self-respect in Southern to use instant grits. All right, so how long does it take you to cook your grits? Uh, 20, 30 minutes, yeah. Yeah, so clearly, yeah. Yeah, man. It was a good movie. It's a great movie. Like, he can't sleep for, for nothing, and then he finally gets, you know, he gets the contempt charge, and he gets sent to jail. He's just, like, passed out like a little baby to sleep. Everybody's, like, screaming and yelling in the background. He's just... <laughs> Yeah, because that's what he's used to. You know, because he's staying at the one hotel and the train keeps coming through at yeah. 4 a.m. It's like, does that train come through here every morning at 4 a.m.? No. And the next morning it comes back through. He's just like, I thought you said it doesn't come through at 4 a.m. It's like, well, it doesn't. It's supposed to come through at like 3.50. You're just like, oh, Jesus <laughs> Lord. Yeah. Talk about being literal in your expressions. Right. right. You got to be impeccable, man. You know, you have to ask what you're asking for. You can't. So only rarely does it come in at 4 a.m. Yeah, it's usually earlier than that because it's on time. It was late yesterday. Like you, you knew what it meant, right? Well, but See? to me, Gotta that be more specific. You have to be impeccable. <laughs> well, because if you're being impeccable, you're truly expressing yourself in a succinct manner. So much so that it's completely understandable and perceivable. That's an impeccable statement. Saying what you mean. And meaning what you say. Sorry, I totally just had like. Are you? Do my my say, brain tangent? Say, say what you want. But what? No, say what you mean to say. They just <laughs> my brain went there. I couldn't. I couldn't help it. I don't know. I don't know where to go from there. Do you take a left at Albuquerque? Hmm? A left at Albuquerque, and just keep going. What till you hit the shore? When you smell salt, stop. Okay. Yeah. It's a good suggestion. Well, if if you start getting wet, stop then too. You know, salt or wet feet. <laughs> and or it's a, You're done. You're good. Yeah. One one or the other. Or both. Which you know. Unless you can walk on water. Which yeah. I mean it's if it's frozen, I <laughs> could. <laughs> Technically I'm still walking on water. Technically. Just saying. Mm. You all right? You mm-hmm. gonna, you're gonna live? Yeah, I think so. All right. See, nine point six doesn't make you five point one. There That's it goes. A, yeah. Well, it's the 
Yeah, because you know the nine point six makes you all burpy. Well, this does too. I'm like, no, no, that's you're, I'm, I'm sipping on it. You're you're barely the nine point six was it, it was a Richter scale noticeability. <laughs> you know, some like large marge stuff. Yeah, I said it. Nine point six. Yeah. Yeah, it sounded like a garbage truck going over the cliff. Yeah, I remember. Oh, you, you do you do now? You I do. That? I do remember. Oh, okay, yeah. good, good. Yeah, glad we. Did I, I'm sorry. Did I black out? <laughs> maybe not this time maybe last time <laughs> I'm sorry what just happened did we win what's high score mean is that bad did I break it <laughs> well Farrell awesome well I mean the first yep. part was the second one was Nick Swordson oh I'm sorry yes thank yeah, you because he did the dance dance revolution yeah excuse me my apologies. How did he see me? <laughs> <laughs> what does he say? He's like the Matrix called. They want their jacket back. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, God, I'm sorry. Oh, dude, my grandmother drank all my pot. How cool is that? <laughs> what? But, I mean, how often does anyone ever get to say that? <laughs> I'm just saying. That's a great scene. That's another good movie. Grandma's Boy. Um, I think I only saw that once. <gasps> you shut your mouth. Yeah, I think I only saw that once. Dude, bro, we're going to have to watch that sometime. It's the bird date. Dude, well, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be. We can it's just... required viewing. That I would agree to. If we want to have it transcend into a relaxed, open environment where it's more of a bro date, I'm okay with that. However... You have to watch it again with me. If I have to, you know, like clockwork orange, like hold your eyelids open. No, nah, you're going to want to do it. You're, you're going to be into it. You're going to like it. It's going to feel good. Yeah. Just sit back and let it happen. I'm feeling uncomfortable right now. You should. It's happening. I'm really glad there's a table between us right now. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> that was not. No <laughs> A little excited, are you? Uh, mm. Did I did I raise your interest? <laughs> I can't even keep a straight face. Stop. Oh, dude, that's what my dad jokes do, bro. <laughs> we all know this. You bring the tangents. I bring the funny. This is how it works. Mm. This is how it goes. This is this is the. Don't look at it. Don't don't <laughs> don't, don't talk. Don't talk. It makes the call back up. <laughs> I believe the correct response oh. is ding. Ding. That's correct. I haven't done that in a while. I have the bell. Oh, I forgot to bring no, it. No, don't, don't, don't. You don't that. like the bell? I hate the bell. I do loathe. Um, oh, God, what's stronger than loathing? Detest. So I can, obviously, I can bring that into the, the B side then. Obviously, if you do, you're going to get. I already get beat. Everybody knows this. They've already heard it now. No, they haven't heard you getting beat. They've heard you express that you feel as though that you are an abused spouse in this relationship. <laughs> you abuse me all the time. You speculated. You inferred. You threw daggers at me with your eyes across the table. See, why do you have to paint that kind of a picture? Now people think I'm holding like a knife to your throat. <laughs> daggers from your eyes. It, from, it's from your eyes. Now tell the people. Now, but I mean, Lord knows where this could go. But tell the people why. Why? Why I looked at you in that fashion? Because I'm losing control. I would just, you never had it. <laughs> you ain't losing it. You just, you're trying to find it. I'm trying to help you find it. Right. Isn't that like the blind leading the blind? Yeah, we're, in the, we're in the dark with no flashlights in a field looking for a needle in a haystack. And it's like, <laughs> we're, in, we're in a like, sunflower patch. A needle in a stack of needles. It's like it's over there. Where I don't know where I'm at. Yeah, and we're so tangent from our own tangents. We're not even in the right location. It's not even the right time zone. Like we're just totally in the wrong spot at the right time, and we don't know what we're doing. Just wandering in circles. Like, beep, 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 beep. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Except you're going left, I'm going right, and then we just meet in the middle sometimes. I like fall over. Yeah. No, it's, wait. It's like when the uh, the windshield wipers on the school bus like finally sync up. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's what it is. And also, we just come in the middle and, sit, and we just fall over like dominoes. Pretty much, yeah, yeah, that's how it happens. How many times did you just zone out staring at the front of the school bus while it was a rainy day? 
Dude, I was still asleep. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I was always zoned out. You kidding me? Stare at the wipers, waiting for them to go, get in sync. Yeah, I did it. That's right. I hit the mic that time. Actually, you hit the pop mic. And you got the screen. Don't, don't, don't. Good job, little buddy. Mm-hmm. Dude. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> I mean, couldn't you just, wouldn't you just, why don't you just, I mean, can't you, would you, would you just, oh. yeah, pretty much. I'm not touching you. Oh, Jesus, Lord. Yeah, we went there again. Well, I mean, but see, that's the thing is like here, down here, it's our time. (laughs) We can do that. But it's all over once we ride up Troy's love bucket here. (laughs) See, that's the thing. It's like when we take break, you need to calm yourself, not have double noodles. There was no double noodles. There will be no double noodles. Not on my watch. I didn't. I didn't bring any. There's no noodles. Oh, there's noodles, but you ain't getting none. If I see you holding noodles, I'm knocking that shit out your hand. <laughs> like right on the floor. Like, even oh, even dry noodles. Good. Make some even, yourself. Yeah. Any kind of noodle. If it's if it's a noodle shape. I might spit in it. And then hold it in front of me and be like, you spit in this? Not that I recall. Mm, that looks pretty good. <laughs> Why don't you make some yourself? <laughs> yeah. 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 Right meow. Right meow. As you wish. No, you have to, as you wish. Yeah. Cause then <laughs> falling down the hill. Yeah, because then otherwise you have to do it like really passionately where you're just like, as you wish. As you wish. Yeah, where you're like on the front of a romantic uh, novel or whatever. Freaking with Fabio. This golden locks and his hamburger hanging out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you going on about? <laughs> totally lose me sometimes. I'm sorry. Why does that not surprise me? What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's all the double noodles, bro. I'm telling you, it's There's clouding no, your judgment. No double noodles today. Yeah, there was no double noodles. Yet somehow. Of course, it's green room, so it's okay. I have to be okay with this. I, I, st- I still feel like I'm being attacked, though. You know, it's like I'm accepting you. How is this an attack? But you're not allowed to eat double noodles <laughs> or any noodles. Not on my watch, no. If there's a noodle in the name, you can't eat it. If it's shaped like a noodle, you can't have it. Yeah, do that shit on your own time. If it's round with a hole in it, <laughs> that's a donut. Was that the ref? It's anything round with a hole in it. If it's a bagel, yeah, no, Dude. you cannot have a donut. Holy crap. I haven't seen that in a long time. That's a good movie. That was a good movie. Dude, Dennis Leary is actually a pretty good actor. Yeah, I, uh, when he had that fire, uh, the firefighter show too, didn't he? Oh, yeah. And yeah, what the hell was it? I forget what Dion who, but it, dude, that was good. I didn't really watch it that much. So. <laughs> You're right there. Better than Don Lemoire? Much better. Yeah, me scoozy. Me scoozy. Me scoozy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here's a fun fact. You made out with your sister. No. Oh. Yeah. Dude, we're totally quoting other shit tonight. That's good. It's just hopping all over the place. Well, but. Miss Goosey. Well, but. This, this isn't where I park my car. And you, you got a little stain right there. Yeah, it's a little. You, I think, you're, I you think your lick, top's getting in the way. You got to lick your fingers, I think. to, to re, yeah. yeah, you really got to work on it. You know. You got to really dig in there. Is it still there? I think your top's getting in the way. You should take that off. <laughs> oh, okay. Yo, what the hell? Yeah, Scotty doesn't know. This isn't where I parked my car. <laughs> this is not my office. Damn right it's not your office. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's called the transition. I totally segued correctly. I used what you had. Chimpanzees riding on a segway. Oh. <laughs> Let, let's do it like we do on the discovery channel is that where your mind went with that one totally did okay but how gang man what wrong with that yeah rob van winkle everything right with that i gotta stop saying no, that. jimmy papalia sorry i was just the, the jimmy papalia did a song with rob van winkle which rob van winkle is no oh, um vanilla ice 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 baby that's true calvin brodus 
Oh, dude. Snoop Dogg. I'm gonna say, oh. Reggie Miller. Red Man. That's it, Reggie. Okay. See, I don't dude. really know all their names. I know. I should be a, I'm not a true fan, I guess. I was gonna say, are you that disrespectful where you don't even learn their name? Like their actual names? <laughs> no, just, I did it just like, you just like, I, it's Alyssa something. Oh, whatever. <laughs> like, dude, do you don't even know her last name? That's so fucking disrespectful. <laughs> What's in a name, man? Honestly, I think a lot. Yeah. And well, if you're an actor, all. absolutely. But. Well, technically, you're only allowed to have a name that nobody else have ever had because you're only allowed to use that name once. But do you even own the name? I think you kind of have to. Do you? Well, I mean, if you want to do it correctly, uh, you know, without being sued for shit. <laughs> Dude, no, I've talked about this before. Anonymity, where you have technically your alternate persona. Anonymity. Anonymity. A C and then. No, that's an anonymity. Don't hurt yourself, son. Because that's what I heard. I just did anonymity. Anonymity. Yeah. When you don't know who somebody is. Yeah. Yeah, it's when you're known you're not a. When you. That's exactly what I was thinking. No, anonymity is when you have actual separation. Separation from what? Anything, really. I mean, it's typically it's on a political level or a legal capacity, but it's just a way to note separation and um, self-preservation. What was that? Um, pump up the volume. Back in the day. Um, self. Oh God, what's what I want to try? Um, Remember that movie? Well, because all right. So think about the uh, like the Amish and the Quakers and all that. They have anonymity, you know, uh, separation of church and state. And anonymity. Am anonymity. So it's am. Hmm. All right. You don't believe me? <laughs> <Good job. laughs> Does it matter if I believe you? It does to me. <laughs> Why can't you prioritize my needs? Does that personally hurt you? I mean, I mean, I might be into that. Wait, what are we talking about? What? That, <laughs> how much you been? I'm on my second beer. Oh, okay. It's the green room. Don't judge. Get out of the corner. Stop judging me from the corner. I'm not. I, I was over there. I was just totally over in the corner and it felt really judgy because I feel judgy for judging you. So I know it was judgy. <laughs> Yeah. What's that even mean? I think it's a direct correlation and a positive reflection on what judgment means. When you feel judgy for doing it, you're like, no, nah, it's totally judgment. Yeah. It's like an, it's a, it's an indicator. When you're judging somebody else for being judgy, then you should feel like, man, no, I just, now I know you were, you were out of line because I was judging you. And now I realize that I'm out of line. So, I don't, wow. You're out of order. <laughs> this whole court's out of order. <laughs> yeah, so, technically, that was jury duty. Because I was quoting Polly Shore, quoting the movie. Right. I did a double quote. I did that. That was tricky. I See? am tricky. It's 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 tricky. So first vinyl I ever purchased, Run DMC's Blue Album, and had that on there. Plus it had a, you know, Mary, Mary, why are you bugging? Wait, uh, mine, mine was a Dr. Dre Chronic album. First vinyl? Oh, not vinyl. I never bought a vinyl, but my phone, I was thinking CD for some reason. I never bought a vinyl. Yeah, no, I'm... I never had a record. Never had a record player. You poor, poor bastard. <laughs> No, I mean, like I had like, you know, my first record player where you had those tiny little Fisher Price, my first, yeah. my first technique junk. or maybe like the one with the little notches in it that it would. Yeah, the that, fish, that was the Fisher Price one. Was pretty, the, pretty sure that was the Fisher Price one. It had like red, green, yellow. Dude, yeah, like the little I, I'm trying to help you feel better about this and you're just digging your own hole. <laughs> The cow goes moo. <laughs> you can actually cut records on those things. You can like chicka chicka what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, not that yeah, you'd want to. I never had like like a real, you know. 
Again, you you Record poor player. poor bastard. Fisher Price, that was Fisher Price, my first Timberlands. And it was like nothing. <laughs> there it is. If it really dates me now, I guess it was actually books on record. Like kids' books on record. Yo, your shirt looks like a dish rag. <laughs> your shirt looks like a curtain. <laughs> You don't. Oh wow! <laughs> you're not. You're not getting this. You don't. You don't know this. Where Where is that from? It sounds familiar. There it is. It's getting there. It's well, coming back around. What's it again. from? I'm not gonna tell you. I'm gonna oh, make, all right. Make you Let's make it right in. Like, no, we can look it up on break. You look it up on break. I'm, you're the one that needs to know what it is. And you need to teach me. But yeah, no, dude. Fisher Price, my first Timberlands. Mm. All right, I'll, I'll t- it's in the woo capacity. I'm trying to think of the records that I remember that I used to have for because it was like I can't even remember. Yeah, again, well, we Davy Crockett, I think was one of them. Davy, <laughs> Davy Crockett, game <laughs> on the wild frontier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> showing my age on that one. And the fact that I watched horrible television, I was forced to. I only had three channels. And I think I had two um, of them were UHF. <laughs> well, now you can't even find it anywhere, but I think I had Br'er Rabbit, actually. That's racist. Well, apparently now it is. No, it was racist back then. We just didn't know it. Well, I didn't, I, I didn't focus on that stuff. It was, I thought it was cute. But I was a kid. What do I know? <sighs> apparently nothing. <laughs> You got Fisher Price, my first Timberlands. You don't even know what that is. Dude, always busting my chops. Somebody has to. No, nobody has to. This, this isn't a thing that has to happen. Yeah, I don't, it is. I don't know why you, Oh. Stone sharpened stone, iron sharpened iron. I guess if you look at it that way. Yeah. Dude, would you rather have somebody who means nothing to you pick on you and make you feel bad? Or would you rather have somebody who means a lot to you and they realize that, like, they're not actually picking on you? They're just, like, helping you have tougher skin? This this is love. No, I get it. That's why I never actually make fun of stuff that's real. Because if I did, then it would be, like, hurtful. Yeah, that that wouldn't be right. Uh, No, I was actually uh, an episode in Scrubs. The, uh, the white doctor who's like mad, you know, Midwestern, just doesn't know shit, basically, like just typical wasp kind of a kid. He's playing street ball in a sense, but they're playing it outside the hospital or whatever. And it's like seven black dudes and him. So it's like a small, you know, it was like, or I guess it was like uh, three on three. So maybe it was like five and him or whatever. But so it's, you know, all black and him. And he's sitting there and he's got the ball and he's like dribbling it. And the one dude talks straight smack. I forget what he says to him. And his response, the white doctor to the to the black guy is like, well, I heard your sister Denise is drinking again. And he starts like crying. And the other guy like goes over and starts to console him. And he looks at him. He's like, it's it's not it's not supposed to be real. And he's like, no, no, it's not how that works. And he's like, oh, damn it. It's like, yeah, dude, if you're going to talk smack like it, if it's actually real, it needs to be something where you can't actually change it or fix it or, you know, cause it's just who you are and there's, there's, no, there's everything right with that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I totally so. get that. I didn't, I didn't see said episode of anything, but yeah, but that, but I can get, I can get it. Yeah. Yeah. I can dig it. And that's that thing. So it's like dude, the fact that we sit here and like, you know, sounds like sometimes we tear into each other. It, it's literally over nothing. It means nothing. It's like, man, that's that's harsh, man. That's harsh. Well, because it goes back to like I was saying, dude, the self-deprecating humor is the best. If you can't be grounded by yourself and everybody else, if you can't allow that honesty to happen between you and your true people, are you being honest with yourself? Are you truly accepting yourself? You know, if you take offense to it, what does that say about you? Right. Especially if what I'm doing or saying is not meant to be offensive. It's meant to be like... Let's let that white elephant go, bro. Like, let's get the elephant out of the room. Who let's realize it? that the part of ourselves we're trying to get rid of. I'm just playing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, um, a black person and a white person cracking on each other about typical stereotypes because they know it's not true. Right. Absolutely. You yeah. know, like, you know, the fact that, you know, you're all right, you're black. So you're going to eat like, you know, fried chicken and watermelon. It's like, well, you're white. You're going to eat everything with mayo. It's like, <laughs> 
right? But those are. Is the that, I didn't even realize that was a stereotype. But. Oh, just totally a stereotype. Okay. That's like when people meet me and they're like, "Wait, you don't like mayo?" I'm like, "I'm aware that I'm white, but I don't like that shit." I'm sorry to inform you, Asian oil is not my deal. <laughs> That's all it is. No, I know it's in mayo. It's like nothing but fat and cholesterol that just like clogs arteries and your butt. Why would you want to eat that crap? Clogs your butt. And it tastes horrible. It's nasty. Okay. Mayo is gross. All right. Are you okay? Is that like Thousand Island dressing too? Is that gross? Actually, I like Thousand Island dressing. Okay. I mean, I I like relish. I think that's gross. But it's relish. It's pickles that have been diced. Which I think is hilarious. Like, why wouldn't you call it diced pickles? No, it's relish. What? It's, what? <laughs> it's diced pickles. Well, what kind of relish, though? That's sweet relish, or is it dill relish? Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, each one of those has its own, you know, derivative. But this is simple fact: is like, you know, relish is just diced pickle. Well, that's true. Yeah. So it's like, seriously, bro. Why? Why are you making a thing out of this? I know. It's why like, you gotta call it some? Yeah. Why? Why you gotta give it a whole new name? You because relish just sounds better than diced pickles. I want a relish in it. And there are other things can be made into relish. It doesn't have to be. Obviously, it could be mangoes. That's a salsa. Like mango salsa. Not like mango you couldn't, relish. You couldn't make a mango relish. Well, to me, then you would have to pickle the mango. You can make and a then dice it. Pineapple relish. You can do whatever you want. That, but so, but you could pickle that kind of stuff. I, would you want to pickle mango? I don't know. <laughs> Holy crap! Look what time it is. It's late. We. Yeah, we blew past it. Yeah, you did. Nobody was paying attention. We were right into it. It's all right. That's yeah, green room. Fuck it. Oh, do you know if we swear too much, they won't monetize us? That's the thing. Yeah, you know, there's like rules and stipulations and. Oh. Yeah. Well, what's too much? I don't know. I'm pretty sure everything I do. <laughs> How do we determine? Like if it's, if it's within context and it's in a quote or, you know, like I give excuses to myself, like in the heat of the moment. Well, see, in all I'm the, expressing something, all the episodes that I see to give me uh, some kind of a reference are usually in like 17 minutes, 12 minutes, and they they bleep that stuff out because they want to keep their stuff monetized. So the fact that we do like an hour plus, it's like, are they really listening? So who knows? Maybe we'll uh, slip it in there under radar. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, don't I guess know we'll, find, yeah, we'll find out. Yeah, but I think, uh, I think anyway. yeah, I think it's time to take a break. We need to get to uh, do what I'm telling you. So, yeah, anyway, I'm telling you at directionsinmusic.org. I-M-T-E-L-L-I-N-Y-O-U at directionsinmusic.org. <laughs> what are you laughing <laughs> I am T-E-L. Because you, you, you look like you're going to start talking again. I was like. Well, yeah, no, it's, you button hooked yourself. It's pretty good. It's, it's been lovely, folks. Yeah, no, dude. I'm just like, hey, we should take a break. You just like went right into it. It's like, so I'm telling you, a direct you, like, what are you, a robot? <laughs> I'm telling you at directionsinmusic.org. I M T E L L I N. I did the robot arms and everything. I, I love I finishing to. off the show like that. That's great. Yeah, I heard that oh. about you. Here, oh, bring it. He pound it out. Knuckles. Stop. Why did you pound me like that? <laughs> you still got to respect me in the morning. That's a no. Wow, great, thanks. Yeah, awkward silence. We enjoy those. All right, cool. Yeah, no, uh, we're in the Much green love. room. And we're about to bounce out. We're gonna go do. Uh, I'm telling you. So thanks for stopping by, fam. Yeah, I'm telling you. Directionmusic.org. I'm Philly D. Mr. Gemini here. And yeah, we're we're leaving the green room. So I don't know. Bye. Later. Peace.